I'll bet it's an update. You press that, and you'll have to read the terms of service, and you'll have to click through the user agreement. It'll be 80 pages long. You'll be stuck here forever. Come on, man. You're scaring him. It won't be like that, we promise. He's right, though. It is an update. And a good one. But we might be a little biased. Hi, I'm Catherine, but you can call me Cat. I'm Bram, and I'm Turk. You don't know us yet, but you will soon enough. Check out this update, and we'll get right to it. Since the very beginning, the Salvation Army has been about doing new things for the Kingdom of God. And starting in June 2017, you're going to get a whole new dose of new. Updated materials for Adventure Corps, Sunday School, and Junior Soldiers will be available to everyone this summer. What? If you haven't guessed, we're Junior Soldiers. Kat, Bram, and I make up the Salvation Response Team. As they have in the past, each of these programs is designed to equip you and your leaders to guide kids like us through the great adventure of following Christ in the Salvation Army. New lessons, apps, and videos are designed to help capture imaginations in a digital age without losing sight of the foundations of our faith. Now, aren't you glad we were here to help you? Don't worry, the jokes will get updated too. Come on, that was classic. We'll see you this summer. See, I told you.
we just need to make a quick announcement well, before we continue on with the, the preliminary music and things. Um, Captain Diana Rojas, her luggage got mistakenly picked up by another court and packed into a van. So uh, if, if I don't know how you will know if you accidentally put her luggage in the van, but if you think you might have grabbed an extra suitcase, please see her so she doesn't have to go home without all her stuff. It is orange and purple. Two suitcases, orange and purple. If you think you stuck those in your van, please come and talk to Captain Diana. Lieutenant, I'm sorry. Good morning. Morning, friends. I hope you had a good night rest. And um, last night, if you did have an opportunity to go to Unplug, we had a great time of worship. Um, and we had a group uh, from West Palm Beach that really blessed our hearts with their minds. And we thought it would be great just for you to enjoy 
that spirit that they brought last night um, in that performance um, of ministry. So as they come up now, just give your attention to the stage and let them minister to your heart as we process worship this morning. Amen. I'm reminded when preparation meets opportunity, we always need to be prepared. And uh, that didn't happen overnight. They were prepared, and the opportunity presented, and they shared their gifts, much like we all have done this weekend. Well, it's been good to come back to Florida. 14 years. 
and to be reminded of all those, the diversity of gifts and culture and uh, hearts given over to the Lord freely, all mind, heart, and soul as they presented this morning. It's been a, it's been a blessing to, uh, to, to experience it once again, to appreciate uh, what God has done uh, over a period of time. And you know what's really a blessing? To see young people who were 12 and 13, who are now leaders, young people who were maybe 15 and 16, who are now Salvation Army officers, uh, that's an expression of God's faithfulness, and so how good it has been to come and experience that and afresh uh, this weekend. It hasn't happened by accident. You know that? This doesn't happen by accident. I want to just, uh, you know, one of the most important things you, you and I can have as uh, Christians as we live out our faith is as hearts of gratitude. Uh, I, I think sometimes we, we, we are grateful, but maybe we don't express it in, in concrete or clear ways. But uh, I think it's part of being a, a, uh, a person who've, who's responded to, 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 uh, to faith and to, who are, are strong and deep in our faith to be, be grateful people. I, wanna, I want you to express some gratitude this morning in just a moment. Uh, we've had people who have led us. Uh, and that's Captains Matt and Jamie Satterley, along with Captain Kelly Cantrell. So uh, just a second, you know, just a second. But they have, they have a cast of staff that uh, work alongside them. It's, it's a team effort that, that you, will, you will see in other divisions, but uh, it's very clear that they work together as a wonderfully uh, uh, knit-together team, uh, using their gifts and abilities. It's an expression of their own faith and their love for you. So I want, I want our... Our, our leaders, our divisional youth leaders, if you'd stand and just give them a hand. Yeah. And then if our divisional staff, uh, music and uh, youth staff, if you'd uh, please stand. Our divisional youth and, yes, come on, where are you? Thank you all. Yeah. Very good. I hear it. I hear it. I hear the gratitude there. Um, so thank you all. It's, they've created this space. They've created this experience. Uh, and man, you know how to have fun. Yeah, my ears are still ringing. But you know how to have fun. So we, we, we and I'm, I'm, I'm just reminded of, of what we see over here. Uh, this theme that has been carried forward, the light bulb that's a, a very vivid reminder and symbol of of that we are to be connected, that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. And um, I wrote it down on my, just a second. Got it. There we go. I have, I've, I've been taking notes on my phone, and, and I'm, I'm learning how to use this, you know. Uh, I used to have a flip phone until yesterday, but now I have the, the iPhone 6 or 7 or something. But you've heard some teaching this weekend, and good teaching, that you need to have hearts that are connected to him, wired to lean in and listen to him. We're wired to be known by him. We're wired to be holy people. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, our guests helped us to talk, uh, uh, Jeff, yesterday to, to, to remind us to tune out all the distractions in this hyper-connected culture. And here we are this morning with another opportunity to hear the voice of God, to respond, to be Filled by the Spirit, the band played beautifully. With thy Spirit, fill me. Make me holy, thine I pray. Lead me. Shepherd, the shepherd, lead me. Uh, all my heart, soul, and mind. I want to say to you, God, and now hear me. God isn't looking for servants. Hear me right. Yes, he is, but first and foremost, he's looking for sons and daughters to join the family business. And when we realize that, that we are to join the family business because our identity is in Christ, not just in Christ, but the way Christ sees us is as a son and a daughter, then we can be renewed in our humanity, in our faith. That's what God has been doing all this weekend. He's going to do it this morning again. So let's join together in prayer as we seek God afresh this morning that His Spirit 
would come amongst us and that we would sense that God is doing a new work. It's not an encore. It's a new and fresh work this morning because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Let's, let's pray together. Lord, you're good, and your mercies endureth forever. Thank you for that. We're fearfully and wonderfully made. You created us. You know us. You understand us better than anyone. You want us to walk worthy in, in your spirit, you know, in, in, in a way that's holy, pleasing to you. So, Lord, this morning, our, my prayer would be that we would be young people, leaders filled with your spirit, who join the family business, who realize that our, our identity is not in anything else but in you. And as we go through this, this morning's service, all, every element, bless it, use it, lead us to the cross, the cross where grace can be found, where mercy can be realized. And as we worship together this morning, may it be pleasing because you are worthy. And if we don't know that, then we don't know you. Help us to know you so we can worship you this morning in spirit and in truth. Thank you for every good and perfect gift that has come from your hand this weekend. Every part of this weekend has come from you. Now bless this time, all that transpires in Jesus' name. Amen. Fear is changing now for the spirit of the Lord is here. The evidence is all around that the spirit of the Lord.
Wired. Desire. Do you have that fire? Because that's what he requires. Now, this ain't about staying in the kitchen when it's hot. It's about whether or not you've been stopped, blocked, or even pushed down by the very same people who put the thorns on his crown. It's the passion. It's the love, that relentless spirit that goes and tears it up, that adrenaline that makes you say to the devil, come on with suck, because I'm wired for him. I can call your bluff. The fake people and the fake friends try to steal your joy, because they know you're going to make it. Looking sad, because you're getting your blessing. Looking sad, because of what they've been missing. You cannot say what he's done for me. Lights me up from my head down to my feet. I'm charged with electricity. I'm wired. Sometimes the Lord has us moving so fast, we just get caught up in our head and we're like, whoa, too fast, too fast. Can you keep up? Too fast, too fast, so you've had enough. God saying, go, Diego, go. Got all the reruns, read the word back to back. Ain't no refunds. God was the only one. All them people that said they love me, they ain't never come. That's why I make it a point to always be the strum. Why I make it a point to live while I run. Running because every life that he touches starts to glow and gleam. So it seems. Suddenly, we're not falling. Calling for an open arm, but you keep stalling. Had to move forward. Got tired of yawning. They say I'm pushing my luck. They say I'm crazy, but they don't realize the simple solution to hate is always love. The fake people and the fake friends try to steal your joy because they know you're going to make it. Looking sad because you're getting your blessing. Looking sad because of what they've been missing. You cannot say what he's done for me. Let's me up from my head down to my feet. I'm charged with electricity. I'm wired. The fake people and the fake friends try to steal your joy because they know you're going to make it. Looking sad because you're getting your blessing. Looking sad because of what they've been missing. You cannot say what he's done for me. Let's me up from my head down to my feet. I'm charged with electricity. I'm wired. Are you? Praise the Lord. Won't you rise with us as we sing worship this morning? Christ for the world, we sing the world to Christ. We bring all of its suffering untold. And that's the goal, to go out into the world and to show them Christ, to be Christ. So sing together with us, Christ for the world. the 
plainness in sin, sorrow war. Our Christ can heal with love and tears. The wandering, the wayward, and the lost by rest. There's something that happens when you sing in your own native language. I'm sure Mrs. Major can, if she were to sing in Danish, something different happens than singing in English. For me, when I speak, when I sing in Creole or French, it brings me back to those worship moments, experiences I had. And I've invited Lorna and Daniela to come and worship with us this morning. Um, as they will sing, she will sing in, in Creole and Daniela will sing in Spanish. And this song, I love it because it speaks of what we are to do once we leave here. We are to move forward, not backwards. Forward to the fight. Forward to, 
talk to your friends, talk to your family members, and tell them about Christ. You can tell them. If they don't, if they don't want to receive it, that's fine. But tell them. So they'll never tell you that you never told me anything about that Jesus that you love. Remember, enthusiasm, you know, be, be excited about it. Be bubbling up, ready to burst. Like, hey, I heard something this past week. I got to share it with you. And just tell them about Jesus. Amen? We're going to sing this song together. And the chorus says, I'm not going back. I'm moving ahead. I'm here to declare to you. My past is over in you. All things are made new. Surrender my life to Christ. I'm moving, I'm moving forward. That's the, that's the lyrics. That's some deep lyrics, young people. So if you're going to sing that this morning, let that be your testimony. <coughs> Truly surrender to Christ this morning. Let's start. Oh, 
change. Nama Yang Suba Pathme in Sri Lanka and 126 under, uh, other countries in the world. The general has asked us to go out, not to stay in, but to go out and share Jesus Christ. He calls it whole world mobilizing. I call it get up and get out of my core to share Jesus Christ. So this weekend, the general said, all youth and children, let's celebrate. And I want all of you to go out. That's what the general said, sort of. My translation. And that's what um, we're going to pray about today. We're going to pray for 127 countries, who some of them have already celebrated this Sunday. And we're going to ask for a lot of things for them. And then we're going to think of ourselves and what we're wired to do, supposed to do. It's our duty to do when we leave this place. So bow your heads and pray with me. Father, we're just so grateful to you today. First of all, you gave each of us a breath to walk into this room, to worship you, to praise your holy name. And we say thank you. Around the world... People just like us, our age, they're worshiping you too, Father. They're claiming you as Lord Jesus of their life. And today, Father, I just ask that you would bless them beyond measure. I ask that you protect them. For you see, some we know, Father, will mobilize without shoes on because they don't have them. They'll mobilize in dangerous places. They'll go out and they'll be hungry, but they'll still go out. And so, Father, we pray for them, that you would protect them, that you would give them boldness to preach wherever their feet may take them. And now, Father, we come to you fed with breakfast this morning, looking beautiful, having clothes on our backs. We know what's going to happen when we leave. We're going to have transportation. And, Father, that is a gift from you. Help us not to squander what you've given us. Help us not to keep it in our hearts, but help us to go out and boldly profess that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he lives to love everyone. And that he is Lord of all. 
So, Father, when we go home, help us not to stay in the house or the core or in our comfort zones. But embolden us with power to go out into the world to share Jesus. We love you, Lord. Remind us of your loving for us. And we ask all of this in your holy name. Amen. Well, good morning, church. Have you been blessed this morning? I know I have. Well, now I get the opportunity to ask for money. Seems like that's part of my job description now. But we've had a wonderful weekend, amen? We got to come stay in this nice hotel. We got to go to Fun Spot. We got to have the DJ uh, Gavi. I'm old. I don't know his name. I'm sorry. We had DJ Gavi last night, and we're here this morning, and you look beautiful in your uniforms. You look amazing. So what we're doing this morning is we are going to collect money for South America East. And um, Mrs. Mockaby just mentioned a little bit of the things that are going on around the world. There are kids that are waking up who don't have shoes or food or anything in their cabinets. Some of them don't even have a house. So we've partnered with South America East to provide books and food for some kids down there. Now, Captain Matt told a story last year of whenever they run out of food, where they live, they have to go out to the marketplace and they have to beg for food. And a lot of times they'll get this rotten food given to them and they'll have to take it home and they'll have to eat it. And that's all they have to eat. How many people ate good this weekend? Anybody eat good this weekend? So I'm not saying all this to give, give you a guilt trip right before we do offering. But I just we need to speak into the realities of things that go on outside of our borders. And one of the things that we've talked about this weekend is being wired. And we're wired with love and compassion. And so this is our opportunity to show that. We just had an amazing praise and worship experience. And so I look at my tithe and my offering as another level of praise and worship. So now you have that opportunity to give even more, to elevate your worship this morning as we give to those who have less than us. I have a couple of exciting things for you real quick. I talked to the divisional commander this morning before I came in. I said, hey, boss, do you mind if we match the offering that's collected this morning? And he said, well, how much do you think it's going to be? No, he didn't say that. The, without hesitation, he said, yes, we can do it. So amen. Thank you, Colonel, for that. We appreciate it. Also, two core officers, when I was coming in, they just walked up to me and they said, hey, we want to. No, they didn't say that. I went to them and said, hey, I need some money. But I have two core officers who have pledged to get $1,500 each from their core to go to South America East. So, yeah, amen. That's a blessing. So this is a challenge to you, young people, to do your part, to mobilize, to put your money where your mouth is, so to speak. So just now we're going to pray, and then we're going to have Martin County come through and collect the offering, and you give as the Spirit leads. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day you've blessed us with, this amazing uh, environment that we get to come in and worship you, Lord, and just where you can just lavish your love on us. And so, Father God, as we think of our brothers and sisters around the world, Lord, help us to open our hearts, help us to open our wallets, Father God, and reciprocate the love that was shown to us. Lord, we are blessed so that we can be a blessing this morning. We pray this in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
Florida Brass is killing it. And Divisional Creative Arts and Divisional U Timberwolves. <laughs> uh, I love Florida. Uh, it's been such an amazing weekend, and I just love being home. And thank you, captains, for even considering me uh, to even invite me. Um, those, those of you who don't know me, my name is Megan, and I grew up in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. It's just about two and a half hours north of Europe, 95. Um, and I was born and raised in a loving Christian home with my parents and my sister Jennifer and I. And we spent countless days, uh, summer days, on the beach. What more could a kid want, right? Well, um, with my church, and when I was about 16, I attended a youth camp. And on June 8, 2001, I, at that camp, I knelt at the altar and I asked the Lord to come into my heart and to be my Savior. And I knew in that moment, in that week, I encountered God in a completely new way. And I knew that my life was never going to be the same. Well, fast forward about two years. Uh, my best friend Carrie and I, we found ourselves applying to be camp counselors at Camp Keystone. Well, I, after working one summer, obviously I fell in love with the Salvation Army. This was my introduction to the Salvation Army, and I actually ended up working about seven summers. I was what you called a lifer. <laughs> um, but about the second or third year, the second or third summer that I, I was working at camp, I realized, you know, God put the army in my life, uh, not just for any reason at all. I started to feel that call to officership. And I took that and I hid it deep down inside and I didn't dare tell anybody. I didn't want anybody to know. And I actually, I ran from God. And I ran from God for about a decade, for about 10 years. And, um... What I didn't tell you about my upbringing is that I had a huge fear. Have any of you, any of you ever been so afraid that you didn't want to leave your house? Well, that, that was me, um, except that I was in high school like most of you, and I had life to deal with. And um, I went to the doctor, and I realized, uh, well, I was diagnosed with social anxiety, and it was so bad. I, I mean, some of you, you know me pretty well. Whenever I have attention on myself or if I have to get up in front of people, I turn, like, beet red, and I, it's like I get red and blotchy, and it comes up. Like, it's not cute at all. And um, so you can real like, how, sorry, when I – felt that call to officership, I literally freaked out. I did not want to do it. And I loved the Army so much. And I loved its passion, its mission to further God's kingdom. And I didn't understand why I couldn't just be in the back to help people. But, and he was calling me forward. And I, didn't, I just didn't understand. And when I was diagnosed with social anxiety, I learned that Exercise is a great way to help with anxiety and panic attacks and work through that. And conveniently enough, at the same time, I fell in love with dancing. I love dance. Uh, I was actually a creative arts member in Florida for like five or six years. Yeah, woo! <laughs> um, and I learned dance, it, it has an artistic beauty about it. It says what words can't. It expresses what words can't. And it's the hidden language of the soul of the body. And I also learned that God had given me this gift to work through my issues. And also at the same time, I got to worship him and glorify him. And that was amazing. And I started to open up to the idea of officership. And... Um, I remember about 2013, I attended women's retreat, and on the first night, 
um, the first meeting, the guest speaker, Jennifer Kitt, I'll never forget. She said, if God has given you a vision and you do nothing about it, shame on you. And I was sitting in my seat and I was like, whoa. <laughs> like, I fully surrendered over to God in that moment. And I said, okay, let's do this. Um, this entire weekend, we've heard, you know, we're created uniquely. We're wired all uniquely to do something. I know that not everyone in this room is called to be an officer, but you're called to do something. And God created you specifically for that something. And if you don't do that something, you will never be fully fulfilled. Trust me, I know I wasn't happy for 10 years. I mean, I was happy, but I was never fully fulfilled because I wasn't doing what he was calling me to do. And um, I know there's some of you that may be scared, may be anxious. I mean, I'm anxious right now. But it's okay. I, you know, God will be with you, and he will push you out of your comfort zone. And I've learned that that's good. And in those moments, you will grow, and he will help you grow, and he will be with you every step of the way. Um, I just want to leave you with a verse, and it's in the first chapter of Joshua. And God tells Joshua... Um, he repeats something to him more than once. And verse 9 says, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Thank you. We are called to be Salvation Army officers. I got a job working public relations for the Salvation Army in Tyler, and that was actually the first time that I even found out that the Salvation Army was a church. And so I was excited for the job, and we went one Sunday morning just to see what service is like at the Salvation Army and was really looking for an opportunity to just volunteer with their school of music. And during the altar call, of that service, the sincerity of the people that were, that were at the altar was almost tangible. And in that moment, I began to weep and heard God say, I'm calling you to be a Salvation Army officer. And at this time, we weren't even soldiers yet. We were <laughs> attending church in another, um, another place. Throughout my life, I had been prepared through, uh, through the Salvation Army, through my leaders, uh, through the programs that I was a part of at the core, uh, through um, following him uh, in, in different opportunities that he gave me in college and ministry. Um, that he had been preparing it all along, uh, and it was in that moment, step up, that he gave me that call. I, I grew up as a musician. I got comfortable just sitting behind a keyboard or sitting behind the drum set. But he, I felt like he was calling me to more than just pulpit work. It's hard to explain. Um, I just knew that there was nothing else that I wanted to do with my life. I was a student at Asbury College and like a lot of young adults, I was struggling to figure out what God wanted me to do with my life. And the Lord just um, revealed to me that He wanted me in missions. I didn't really know what that meant. I didn't know what that looked like. And then, within days, weeks, I was introduced to John. He told me about being called to be a Salvation Army officer, and I just thought that was the greatest thing for him. But our relationship grew, and I realized that that mission I was called to, and that man I was called to marry, included the Salvation Army, and it included to be a Salvation Army officer. Uh, something that I, I'm really excited about uh, being a Salvation Army officer um, is, is changing the lives. And I want to be the same to, to families all around the world, uh, changing the lives one step at a time. I suppose uh, from a very young age, I understood that God had a plan for my life and a 
big plan, big exciting plan for my life. Um, and I, I also remember that the people I looked up to most were in the Salvation Army. They were my leaders, my Sunday school teacher, my uh, Corps officer, my DYS, my Corps cadet leader. And um, so I, there was always probably something in each of them that I wanted to have in me, in my own life. And so uh, I was uh, called out to do disaster work uh, on the banks of the St. James River. There were firemen who were down there trying to stabilize uh, an oil tank that had come dislodged and there was oil leaking in that area and threatening a lot of homes and people. So they had evacuated the area. So we uh, got an army uh, general to get us right up to the site of that. And uh, my father and I were working that canteen. He used to have the nicest white shirts with uh, French cuffs. And he went and greeted them as they came up the hill and shook their hands, and gave them uh, sandwiches and drinks. And slowly that uh, nice white pressed shirt of his started getting splats of, uh, of oil on it. And I looked at that and I said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm called to care for others, to love, to preach, to serve.
Florida. Amen. This has been a beautiful weekend. I just want to tell you just how proud I am of you. You couldn't disappoint me. I don't believe if you tried. I've seen you responding. I've seen you praying. I've seen you just asking the Lord for wisdom, for strength, for encouragement. You've been responding to the Lord all weekend long. And I want to tell you just how proud I am of you. Can you believe that Wired 2017, this youth councils is almost to an end? Not yet but very soon we're in the final moments. And during these times, you've made decisions that I know will stay with you, that you will remember for the rest of your life. I know it because I was in a place just like this. I can remember those decisions I made that have stayed with me, that changed the course of my future, that brought me to right here, to stand in front of you. I can't believe it that I have this opportunity to even talk to you, those decisions impacted my life and the decisions that you have made this weekend, young people, will have changed your life. But guess what? It will change the lives of people around you that you haven't even met yet, that you don't even know. We've talked a lot this weekend about being wired for. But I believe with all my heart that there are young people here that are being called to be wired to Christ, wired to Him, wired to God in such a way that you will go wherever and do whatever He asks you, He calls you to do. Now that's boldness. People like Megan Mercier, she's a warrior. She's one of the boldest ladies I know, second to my wife. And I'm proud of her, proud of her because she was called to be wired to Christ, to go wherever, do whatever that he asked her to do, and she's answered her call, and I'm proud of her. People like Missy, Major Missy Romack yesterday who shared with us stories of people. She said, if I had not said yes, a divine yes, there are people she knows, people whose lives have been changed because she said yes. Young people, you are fearfully and wonderfully made, fearfully because you have a choice. God designed us that way. You have the choice to say yes or to say no, to go one way or go the other. And in these moments, we just want to give you the opportunity because I believe that there are people who are called to be wired to God in that way, that you will go and do whatever he asks you to do, to be whoever he is calling you to be. 730 members, come and join us. We had lunch together yesterday. It was an incredible time. You're called. And you know it. Come and stand on the stage with us because we want to pray for you. We want to acknowledge you. We want to recognize you. Now, there are others right now. You say, I'm not a 730 member, and I don't have this figured out. I don't know. I don't even know what, I don't even know what this all means, but God has spoken to me. The Holy Spirit's whispered to me in these days, in these moments, and said, I'm calling you out, like Jeremiah, who said to God, God, I'm afraid. God, I'm too young. I can't do this. What did he say to Jeremiah? The voice of God came to him and said, don't be afraid, Jeremiah. Just like he said to Megan, don't be afraid. I got this. There's somebody on this side. God's called you. You know it. Get up. Get up and come and join us. Somebody right here in the center. God's called you. Don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. Get up. Who are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Over here. Maybe God's called you. Get up and respond in the songster brigade, in the choir. Is there anyone who will be brave enough and bold enough? Because listen, I believe, I believe. You can say no. You can say, I don't understand it. Maybe God's calling you. Yeah, applaud them because they're brave ones. These guys are courageous. They're my heroes right now. You can you can push back. You can push back the call of God in your life and you can... You can do it your own way. I remember saying to my major one time, my core officer, well, how will I know? What if I don't answer God's call? And he said, well, to be honest, you'll never be truly happy doing anything else. Young people, why are we doing this? It's important for me as a leader to tell you this. We love you. And we love you not because of what you can do or because of your potential. Although I look at you and I can see potential amazing. Come on, hon, we're proud of you. Proud of you. Welcome, buddy. Welcome. Don't got to understand it. You don't got to know how it's going to work out. You just got to say yes. You just got to say yes. Let God sort out the rest. I mean it. Come on, sister. Come on and join us. You can say, I'll do whatever. 
I'll do this. Maybe I'll take this other path. But what I want for you, the reason why we do this is not because we want you to do something. We don't want to manipulate you. We don't want it to be an emotional thing. I want you to have the best life that you can have. And I believe if God's called you to this ministry, if he's called you to serve him, to give your life over to him like this, in this way, you cannot be happy doing anything else. So I want you to be happy. That's all it's about. That's what, I love you that much. Well, these moments are going to pass. I'm proud of you. Look at you. Guys, look at them. Do you see them? That's bravery and courage right there. We love you. And we're proud of you. Proud of you. I know you've heard it. You've heard it already. It's, it's not, there's a calling to authorship, but we're all called. We're all called to service. And I, would, I think everyone should be standing on, the, uh, on this as well. Maybe God's calling you to local officership. You're saying, I'm not ready to take that step. I, I, I'm, don't worry, we're not going to put these guys on a bus to Atlanta right now. Not yet. It's not going to happen. But, but maybe God's calling you to stay in your local community and to do, what, to do all that you can for the kingdom. You may say, well, I'm going to be a doctor or a lawyer. You know what? You can do that and be an officer too. Some of the greatest Salvation Army officers were officer doctors and officer lawyers and officer accountants. But maybe you're going to do that in your community, but you're going to be a good local officer. Will you stand where you are? Because you're just as important, just as amazing, and just as crucial to the Army. If God's calling you to be a local officer, stand right now because I want to see you. Good. We need local leaders, leadership, local officers, local leaders, people who say, I feel called to do that as well. Good, good. Well, we're going to have a prayer, a prayer for these, for these beautiful young people, young men, women, that I know God has a tremendous future for them. You remain standing. We want to pray for you as well. Today is a good day for the Salvation Army. It's a good day for the kingdom of God. And I'm just going to pray over you, and I'm going to invite you to pray with me. Dear God, we just thank you for today. It is a privilege. It is a responsibility. It is an honor to work alongside you as your co-worker. And so I pray right now for a hedge of protection and all these young people standing here on the stage and standing out in the audience that the decision they have made today, the vision that you have given them this morning, where the Holy Spirit has spoken, I pray that it will not be silenced after they leave this room. I pray in the name of Jesus for each and every one of them for the path that you have set before them, Lord, that they will always go forward and never backward. Lord, it's an act of worship to be able to give our entire life daily to your building of the kingdom. And so I pray that the young people realize today that the army needs officers. God knows what our needs are, and I pray that those needs are met right here by the people standing on this stage. Lord, again, we just love you. We thank you so much because you allow us to be a part of building your kingdom. And so I pray that it begins this morning in the hearts of these young people and that you will surround them, that you will bring the right people at the right time to teach them, to equip them, to lead them. And Lord, I thank you again that it is for the privilege to serve you in the Salvation Army. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And I'm going to ask that you follow me out to the hallway. Guys, let's give them another hand. Why don't you? Just...
Good morning. Today's scripture will be found in Psalms 139, and I would ask you to please stand for the reading of his word. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You receive my th- thoughts from afar. You, you discern my going out and my lying down. You're familiar with all my ways. Before, before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like day, for darkness is as light to you. For you, create, for you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you, God, would slay the wicked. Away from me, you who are bloodthirsty. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, Lord, and abhor those who are in rebellion against you? I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there, see if there is any offensive way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. May God have a reading, a blessing on the reading of His Word. I'm proud to be English. My family have served and. We've defended this country and have been to war for this country. I'm, I'm really patriotic about Bangladesh. Well, I am, I am 100% Icelandic, yeah, definitely. This is a Kurdish wedding with my mom in the traditional Kurdish clothes. Da, 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 da. We're just proud black, so that's it. Yeah, I think we are probably the best country in the world, if I'm honest. Think about other countries and other nationalities in the world. What, are there any that you, you don't feel you, you get on with well or you, you won't like? particularly? Germany. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Germans. You might think they're a little bit... Particularly India and Pakistan, probably, because of the whole, you know, the conflict. Because I have this side of me that's like, that hates mm. Turkish people. Not, not people, but the government. But French? No. <laughs> We're just best, you know, it's just fact. I'm more important than you. I don't know you, but I, in my opinion, I am strong and I am, I am more important than a lot of people. How would you feel about taking a journey based on your DNA? Um, yeah, I feel very uh, intrigued. What could you possibly tell me that I don't know? So do you know how DNA works? So you get half from mum and half from dad, so 50% from each of them and they get 50% from their parents, and back, and back, and back. And all those little bits of your ancestor, they filter down to make you, you. I need you to spit in this tube for me. You spit up to the little black line. That's a lot of spit. Right, the story of you is in that tube. What's it gonna tell me? It's going to be, oh yeah, you're French, and yeah. wait, your grandparents are French, and wait. 100% Bengali. Solid Iraqi. I'm Cuban. <laughs> you going to tell me that I'm English? No, I've told you. Jay, can you come down and join us? I'm a little bit nervous, I have to say. So you're ready to find out your results? Will you read it out to us, please? Wow. 
look at me. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, wow. I didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Caucasus? Which was uh, Turkish? Yeah. <laughs> Eastern Europe, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Greece. I'm 32% British. <laughs> <laughs> what? Great Britain, 30%. Can we? 5% German. I'm Irish. Yeah. So I'm a Muslim Jew. Great Britain, 11%. Are you saw these results on mine? Eastern Europe, <laughs> Iceland has definitely moved closer to Europe now. I'm gonna go a bit far right now, but this should be compulsory. There would be no such thing as like extremism in the world if people knew their heritage like that. Like, who would be stupid enough to think of such thing as like a pure race? In a way, we're all kind of cousins, in a broad sense. Mm. In a much more direct sense, you have a cousin in this room. Mm -mm. Turn around and guess who it is. Wash? Yeah. What's that? Why don't you come down here and meet oh your cousin? Did you know that? I didn't know I did. This is like, I, my heart's pounding right now, I swear to God. I'm <laughs> Jay from everywhere, but I've reached to this. <laughs> I'm a real man of the world. Wow, that's beautiful. Thank you. So, would you like to travel to all of these places? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> People we hate, we are. Did you hear? Did you hear what was said? I hate Turkish people. Oh, oh, government. Because hate sometimes is personal. It's hard to hate a thing. Our hate turns personal. I don't know if you know, but I'm a lieutenant colonel. I thought I'd take my tunic off to fool you. But I want to talk to you right now just from me. If we can just dismiss the colonel thing and Salvation Army thing, I just want to share with you for just a very few minutes. It's going to shock you. It's going to shock you. You're going to love me when this is over. I want to share with you just a couple of minutes about where I came from. Three weeks ago, uh, Deborah and I spit in a tube in our quarters. We ordered the test. We spit in the tube. It took me 30 seconds. It took my wife two and a half hours to fill that little tube. And we sent that tube off with the hopes that it would come back and the hopes, truthfully, that we could share the results of that test with you today. That's our plan. Uh, but it takes six to eight weeks, and they're backed up, evidently. Everybody's trying to find out who they are. It's going to be really interesting when we find out who our cousins are. And maybe some of us are cousins in here. Maybe we are related, regardless of our skin color, regardless of where we're from, maybe because of the DNA and the biological fact of who we are, maybe some of us related. I wouldn't doubt it. I might be your brother. You might be my sister. And I think that would be really, really cool. Uh, I know what I hope I am. I know what I hope it says. And if it says what I hope it says, I will be definitely white chocolate. I want to go home to Alabama and I want to say to my family, yo, home is home. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> but I want to do that. <laughs> Your boy's home. I grew up in Alabama and I had a friend named Cleo. Cleo and I went to school together. We couldn't walk to school together because blacks and whites didn't walk to school together. 
We played on the playground together, and it was sometimes frowned upon, but Cleo and I became pretty good friends. We couldn't go to the restrooms together because there was white and colored water fountain uh, restrooms. We couldn't drink water from the same fountains because there was a distinct sign that said white colors. And I never understood that as a kid. I never knew what that meant. I never knew why I can't, what's what's the big deal? But I was taught that, and Cleo and I, we would play, but when it came time to go home, we would walk with a group of folks, and Cleo and I would walk, and we got to a point in our neighborhood, we got to a point where Cleo went one way, and I went the other. It was because of segregation. It was because in that day and time, in the 60s, in Alabama, where I grew up, we never got together. I didn't hate Cleo. I didn't even know what hate meant. But I knew that over the years and as I matured that, oh, I never used the word hate. My actions and the things that I was seeing and the things that I was experiencing and the influence that my culture and my family had on me affected me and and, and, and it forced me or it made me or it directed me in a way to show hate in ways other than my mouth. The worst kind of hate. Never burned a flag. Never wore a sheet, though I saw it. It was there, and it was a part. I'll never forget it. Over the years, as I grew up and became an officer, it became more, I became more mature in my spiritual faith, and there was more influence. That over the years, over the years, I really had to repent. And I'm telling you, I'm a person that is the result of being forgiven of my sins, the sins of racism. God forgave me of that. I confessed it to him. And I stand before you today, someone who constantly has to struggle with the way God made me and the people that God put me in touch with and influenced me so that today I can say to you that what we experience in the news, it even saw it today about a superior race, that sometimes if we spit in a cup, we might find out that the people we hate are our own family. It's amazing. When you see what happens by people who are killing people, they weren't wired to do that. We were, we were knit together. You've heard it a billion times this weekend. We were knit together in our mother's womb. We were fearfully and wonderfully made by a loving God. Hate had nothing to do with it. We came into this world and the influences in the culture and family, all of those things tends to take us in places that sometimes God had no intent for it to happen. The young kid who went into a Charleston church and shot and killed nine people, one being a home league member of the Salvation Army in Charleston, South Carolina. He was not wired to do that. Dylan Klebo, years ago at Columbine, he and his friend, he was not born. God did not wire him to do that. God wired us that we might have the mind of Christ in us. We might experience the fullness of God in us that we might have and be Jesus to a world that needs us. And if there's ever a time in our life, young people, if there's ever a day that we need to express by our words and by our actions and get away from this hate speech and get away from pushing people away who are different than us, it's today. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? If there's ever a day that you need to seek somebody out at your school or at your college or at your work or in your neighborhood or wherever it is you live, wherever it is you have your being, if there was ever a day that you needed to seek someone and connect with them and become community with them, it's today. It's this afternoon. It's in somebody within your core community. It might be tomorrow. It might be at home. Wherever it is, reach out. You are wired for community. We are wired by God to have people a part of us. And I encourage you, I implore you from the authority of the word of God that you reach out to someone. You reach out to someone who is different than you. My son married an African-American girl. The wedding was very interesting. The wedding was very interesting. We had family, I had family, who wouldn't come to the wedding. Hate, hate lives. Oh, they never said, I hate you. Those words never came out of their mouth because that's not what we do. We're taught better. We have better manners than that. But hate was expressed in action or in non-action. 
And it wasn't until the graveside of one of the participants in that wedding that one of those family members who came to the funeral said to our daughter-in-law, I'm your uncle, and embraced her. Why wait for something like that to heal hate? Why don't we step out to God? God does not see color. God does not see any of that. And we've got to stop seeing it. We've got to stop seeing people and identifying them by who we think that they are. We need to reach out. We need to reach out and allow God to be in our life and in the way that we talk to other people. Did you see the news? There was something on Facebook the other day about two little boys, a little a white boy and an African-American boy. Did you see that? They wanted to fool their teacher. The little boy, did you see the little white dude? He wanted to fool his teacher. The two boys did, and he said to his mother, if I shave my head, I'll look like him. That's the only thing. It's the only difference, not the color, not the color. The only thing that they saw was their hair. Why can't we be like that? Watch this clip. Cheryl. We've got a five-year-old boy who is proving kids have a few lessons grown-ups can learn from as well. Jo Jax Rosebush, he got a buzz cut so he could look exactly like his best friend, Reddy. Mm. Well, his mom, Lydia, said she couldn't, he couldn't wait to go to school with his new haircut because he thought it would be hilarious if he and Reddy, the two you see there... They could confuse the teacher? Right. Looking similar with the same haircut. She he's, might not be able to tell him apart. Right. He, yeah. That's what he's thinking. He's five years old. That is really cute. His mom said on Facebook, quote, if this isn't proof that hate and prejudice is something that is taught, I don't know what is. The only difference Jack sees in the two of them is their hair. So it seems like a big lesson here that adults and kids can benefit from the colorblind. I feel like every generation you kind of learn from your kids I in think that so way, too. don't you think? I think so, too. Mm -hmm. I've said to people, I've gone to people and repented of my attitude. I've said to people of different color than me, I am sorry for how I did and if I've ever offended you. And I'm still prone, maybe as we all are, I can only speak for me right now, I'm still prone to allow hate and prejudice to come into my life. I repent, I open myself up to God and ask that God take that from my heart. It wouldn't it be a good thing if all of us in this room did that we weren't wired to hate we weren't wired to hate we were made in the image of God and my challenge to you today is this my challenge to you is this if the most significant contribution we can make to the world to our country today is to let this hate thing go and ask God to help you to reach out to someone can you do that I have six grandchildren. I love my grandchildren very, very much. My grandson says to my son says to me, you let them do things you would never allow us to do. You know what I say to them? I like them better than I like you. <laughs> I have a grandson named William. He's 16 years old. He's a great, 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 great kid. He is Sheldon on Big Bang Theory. Two months before he was born, the doctor said to his mother and his father, we believe this child is a Down syndrome baby. And they began to make offers, or make recommendations to them. One of it was abort. Can you imagine? Seven months. <laughs> and they wanted to give them the option to abort this baby. Then they said, we can do these tests, and if we do these tests, then it can tell us if, if this child is indeed a Down syndrome baby. I've never been so proud in all my life of my children when they said, no test, no abortion. They were offended. If you knew my daughter-in-law, you knew there was more than, there was, more was said than <laughs> there'll be no test. <laughs> Poor doctor. <laughs> but we clung to the 139th Psalm, which is... In my Bible, it's entitled William's Psalm. And for two months now, understanding about Wired and understanding about my past and what God redeemed me from and thinking about how I would say something that for me is very uncomfortable to, to stand up, sit up here and, and say this to you. I've read William's Psalm now for two months every single morning. 
It's underlined, it's written in that this was William's song because our children and we claim the fact that Down syndrome or no Down syndrome, this child was fearfully and wonderfully made. And he is. Just ask him. (laughs) He was knit together in his mother's womb. Before a word came on his tongue, God knew it. Before he took any action of going in and going out, God knew it. And that same promise is for you, young people and adults. (laughs) Come on, adults, we're not exempt from this. Look at me. None of us are exempt from any of this without realizing of who we are and what we want God to do in our life. We weren't wired to hate. We were wired to be God's children. Watch this video. Search me, Lord. He searched me, Lord. And you know me. All this pain, I wonder if I'll ever find my way. I wonder if my life could really change at all. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and I rise. I'm not hanging for you. Before I word comes to my tongue. Your eyes saw my informed body. All the days were written in your book before they came to be. When I awake, you are with me. God, you created me. You created me and knit me together in my mother's womb. Am I... Mother's wound. I praise you. I praise you. I p- p- praise you. I praise you. Because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I am wonderfully made. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God made me awesome. if you noticed, but um, there was an election a few months ago, and if any time of watching TV taught us anything, it's taught us how divided we are, how much we are supposed to hate one another, and isn't it unfortunate that God's holy church, his holy people, were smack dab square in the middle of it? telling everybody else what they should and should not be. And we are called to bind people together. We were the reason it was ripped apart. You holding on to hate this morning? I can't see your heart, but God does. Who are you hating this morning? Could be that other core person. Could be somebody from your core. Could be somebody from that core down south, from that core up north. Could be those people from that country, those people who believe in those things, those people who hold those signs, who do those things. Man, you didn't wire any of us to hate, but
But isn't it sad that the church, God's people, are known more now for the things that we hate than the love that he has called us to show. You and I are guilty of that. It's easy for us to say, those people, there it is, those church people, when we're talking right about ourselves, he makes beautiful things. Come to this place, guys, right now, and let's repent of that sin. Let us bring those things that we were hating. Let us bring those things, that, that racism, that prejudice, that violence, that all of that stuff, politics, geez, what a mess. But we can come here to this place now and say, Lord, wash us clean. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Racism is no different from lies in the eyes of God. We tend to put weight on sin. This is worse than this. It's sin. So whether you're a racist or whether you just perhaps lied a little bit this evening or this morning or last night, you need to come to this place and get clean with him. And when we come here to this place, he takes that and makes beautiful things out of it. The band's going to play beautiful things. This place is here. Been holding on to hate? Those people. That president. God loves them as much as he loves you and I. Come to this place. Badly. Lead us, please. place up here there's spots along the wall there will be room you just come to this place tell you that the world is dark you know that you've watched tv guys i've seen you know we it takes 20 minutes on facebook or twitter or instagram to see that the world is dark if the light of god is needed at any time in the, in the history of the world it's now and again we are only the light of the world when we're attached to the source our light bulbs that we've been focusing on. And there's still light bulbs up here. There's still time to come and, and take that light bulb and sing in it and, and, and represent, physically represent that light of God is in me shining into the darkness. The world says, hate them. Not so, not so many different words, but in the ways that we act and the things that we do. Those that aren't like us, those who believe different things. Block them out, lock them up, stay away from them. There are parts of town you shouldn't go to. And in that, the light of the world has come into that darkness. And so he has chosen to go to those places, to talk to those people, you, me, all of us, not officers, but any of us who have said, Jesus, you are in me. You are the light of the world. We're to be that light out. You come to this place still. You get to this light bulb. So you put that in. You come to this place. You know, we can sit back, right, and watch the news and say, there's so much racism in the world, and that's true. There's so much 
prejudice in the world, that's true as well. There's senseless violence, that's true. There's so much division, that's true. Somebody should do something about it. And my favorite thing is to listen when people say, you know what we should do? We should get everybody in a room, and if we just talk out our feelings, if we just talk it out, then all the world's problems will go away. If we get Israel and Palestine in one room and just let them talk it out, it'll all be all right. If we get North and South Korea in one room and let them talk it out, it'll be all right. If we get this person and that person in a room and let them talk it out, the root of all of this stuff, guys, of racism, of prejudice, of violence, the root of all of this always is and always will be sin, selfishness. I'm better than you. No one's better than me. It's selfishness, and that's what it comes down to is sin. That's the core. That's what all of the root is attached to, the sin in the world. Nothing will change between Israel and Palestine, North and South Korea, uh, you know, uh, going on in our country. Democrats and Republicans, nothing will change. It doesn't matter how much we talk. Nothing will change until the root is dealt with. And the root is dealt with here. Person to person, that battle takes place. And we deal with that root. We deal with that battle by saying, Jesus, come into my heart and make me clean. Wire me differently. Take the circuits and reattach them in the way that you want to. But how will they know? Democrats, Republicans, church, non-churched, Muslim, Jew. How will they not? How will they know if nobody goes and tells them? all of this division out of all this anger in the world we believe and we trust that in that he can still make beautiful things we trust and, 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 and cling to the hope that he can make beautiful things and all that is needed all that is required is we come before him and say God I'm a sinner fix me up He'll do it. Verse 3. All around, all the spring ain't up from this old ground. Out of chaos, life is being found. say my life's a wreck I am anything but beautiful captain you don't know what me you don't know the darkness in my heart I don't have to know but he does he sees you as a beautiful thing a beautiful creation you were fearfully and wonderfully made Watch Captain uh, Westmoreland showed us that video clip yesterday in Corkett at graduation where the father was standing over his daughter, remember, and he said, I am beautiful, putting that, affirming that word into her. And then he said, uh, you know, I am no better than anybody else. And her in a little cute voice said the same thing. I am no better than anybody else. And then he said, uh, nobody's better than me. And I, in the room, we all said it, didn't we? Yes, we agreed. And then we walked out the door of Corkett at graduation. And we got in our bus and went to places around Orlando or we went swimming or whatever. And man, somewhere along the way, 
after those 10 minutes of walking out the door, we forgot that we agreed wholeheartedly 10 minutes ago, but now we're out here and I am better than these people. We might not have said that, but in the ways that we act, in the ways that we do, the ways that we think, we have said, I am better than you. How many of us have not seen those kids at school and been like, ooh, let me just walk a little bit out of the way. How many of you have seen those people at home or at school or in our communities and it said, let me just walk the long way around. Let me just go around. Let me get off this elevator quick so I don't have to be near that. Guys, Jesus, forgive us. That's our prayer. That's our prayer here at this is come forgive us. And at this time, core officers, we ask for you like we do at the end of every event. There's nothing greater than when we come together as a core and say, God, we commit this core cadet brigade to you. And we're going to ask you to do that at this time. You can find a time, a, a place somewhere in this room where you as a core can get together and say, Lord, consecrate us, take us, mold us, help us not to hate, help us to be accountable to one another. Take us as a core and remind us that we are wired for you to go into the world and proclaim you. You know, we always kind of say, you know, pray as a core and say, we're going to go into the world and conquer it. And then we get on the bus and we kind of lower our expectations or we forget. So maybe this is what you pray as a core here this afternoon. God Almighty, will you help us not to quite conquer the world, but to go make cheese sandwiches when we get home and pass them out to the homeless guys on the side of the street. That's our, that's our first step. Not to go and conquer, but to just go and make some cheese sandwiches. Maybe that's your prayer, your core prayer. So fill the aisles. There's space up here in the front again. There's still light bulbs. But again, as the praise man sings, this is the moment. This is the time. This is the opportunity. Don't, don't let the enemy say, you're too cool for this. You're better than this. Hadley. deal with that racism with those people with the other side of the aisle Lord I need you in that in a world that teaches us to hate Lord I need you
God's Holy Spirit is here. Keep praying. Lift up your burdens to Him. Live it all here as we sing Holy Spirit together. As, uh, as your core finishes, you can, you know, begin heading back to your seats. Take your time, take your time. There's no rush to leave this place until the work is done, until the heart work is accomplished, until his work is done, until it is finished. Don't, don't leave this place with sin still clinging on. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. Could have had the coolest my counsels ever. Comes free and my shame is undone. Fun spot, Gavi, all those great things. But if we don't get right with him, it was... If we don't get right with him, it, would, it doesn't voice, matter. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come from this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts longs for. To be Tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Today is the day of salvation. In your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit. Sing with us as you come back in.
lift your voice and sing, Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. God Almighty, as this weekend um, begins to, to shut down, come to a close, Lord, will you help us to remember at all times that we are wired by you, and when we trust in you for our salvation, we are wired in you and for you, and wired to tell the world about you. One of the greatest things about youth councils is that we leave this place filled. But one of the frustrating things is we get back on the bus in an hour or two down the road and it's like the flame kind of begins to flicker already. And there's, we kind of get filled up sometimes with the spirit of youth councils and not your spirit. But Father, we pray right now that you would let your spirit fill our hearts. Give us that abundant life, that that sustainment as we go here and go home. And help us to remember, Lord, that there are people in our community who are not like us, who are different from us. But you have called us to love them and to show them you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done this weekend. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. And thank you for allowing us the absolute privilege of being here in this place. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God is good. Ah, come on. God is good. And all the time. Let's remain standing because we're going to end up on on a high note. Because now you can say so to the world that you are redeemed. Amen. So as we sing, say so together, just let your heart sing out to God how grateful and gracious you are that you were able to be here in this wonderful weekend. And once again, we say it all the time, but it's not just to say it. We do love you. We do pray for you. We do care for you. We care for your souls. We care for all the things you go through at home. And more importantly, Jesus Christ himself cares about all that you go through. So let's sing together, say so. What does it mean to be saved? Is it bit more than just a prayer to pray? More than just a way to heaven? What does it mean to be his? To be for his likeness? Know that we have purpose. Here's our purpose. To be salt and light in the world, in the world. Salt and light in the world. Come on! Let the redeem. Salt and light, the world in the world. To be salt and light, the world. To be 
Seated. You can be seated. Just a quick couple announcements and thank yous as we get ready to leave. We hope and pray that as you leave this place, you will remember that you are not the source. That you have to be tied in, wired to, connected to the source. Apart from me, he says in John, you can do nothing. So remember, as you, it's great to hear, you know, throughout the year last year, we heard you guys use the word relentless. I never heard you use the word relentless before until as youth council team. And I hope this next year, you'll, I hear the word wired a lot more, that we are connected to him, wired. So don't forget this, by the bus ride home, who you are connected to and who is the source of all that you uh, are and who he's made you to be. Don't forget, young ladies especially, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made and don't let the world tell you otherwise. In that... The security guards here wanted me to tell you that they thought you guys were absolutely perfect this week. So they just wanted me to tell you, and not, and not just Salvation Army security, I'm talking about the real popo, all right? Also, can I just say to the young men in the room, you're especially perfect if there were cheerleaders in the hotel and you were still good, all right? And if you missed that there were cheerleaders in the hotel, stay woke, fam, all right? We do have some thank yous that we want to say now that I've ruined it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how I'm supposed to follow that. We do have a few thank yous that we desperately want to say. Um, first of all, to our youth and music department family. We are a family. To Judy and Alicia and Paula and Tom and Daryl and Adley and Sabrina and Cheryl and E.B. and Sam and Phil. There is no way that any, any of this could happen without them. Um, and they have to deal with me <laughs> all of the time. So they especially uh, deserve a big thank you. We love you. Thank you so much for, for everything that you do on behalf of the young people to show them Jesus. And we also want to thank Colonel Ken and John Light for being wonderful leaders 
Thank you to the DHQ staff who supports us in everything that we do. Thank you for our divisional group leaders, for all of your hard work. I want to thank American Audio for wonderful sound. And thank you, Carrie, for the wonderful lights. And we could not do what we do without you guys. Thank you so much. And we want to say thank you to our THQ guests. We want to say thank you to the Maccabees and the Westmorelands. Thank you for coming to Florida and hang with us. Appreciate that. Cadet Megan Mercier, welcome home. All right. JoJo, always. And Jeff Wallace, wherever he is, he's probably looking for a house in Orlando <laughs> right now. We'll see you in May. <laughs> We also want to say thank you to all the divisional groups who came this weekend and gave an offering of worship to the Lord so that we could see him through dance and through timbrels, Colonel, and through the band and through everything that, uh, that happened here. The, it is your offering of worship, and we don't take you for granted. Thank you for using your gifts to glorify him. I need to also say a special thank you to every Corps officer and youth leader. Yeah. We know that we asked a lot of you this weekend, staying up until 2 a.m. We, we do not uh, take what you do for granted. Thank you for all of your tireless service on behalf of the young people. Um, thank you so much for your heart and for your love. And then I need to say also, young people, don't forget that you are fear fearfully and wonderfully made, that you have purpose and worth and value. Don't trade that away for something that will only bring you death and destruction. Stay wired to him. Know that we are here cheering you on, praying for you. Don't let that connection drop. Stay wired. You are loved. You are so loved. So Illuminate's going to come and lead us in our conclusion. Then after that, Cork Cadet Jean Akimoto from Pensacola is going to come and give us our benediction. Don't you dare leave this room until she says amen. All right, that will be the close. After that, you're good to go. All right, illuminate. One of the things plaguing our generation is people trying to figure out who they are. This is a song to our generation. We bear the name of the Father. And in Him we find our identity.
everyone. So please bow your heads and close your eyes. Okay. Lord, let there be peace to the brothers and sisters in love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love the Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. Thank you, Lord, for the great weekend. Thank you for every meeting, every speaker, every group who shared their faith and your story with us. We leave with a greater understanding that we are wired fearfully and wonderfully. We are wired for a mission and a purpose. May we let our light shine at home, at school, at the core, wherever we are. Give us safe travel home, and in your name we pray, amen. One, two, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, but say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say so, say so. I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I am Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so. Say so.